guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be doing some surface grinder modifications. But what? I hear you all asking. So there's two or three things that I want to do to the surface grinder which have largely meant that since it arrived in the shop and we got it up and running I've not really done a lot with it and there's very good reason for that. So what I'm going to do now is take you to the surface grinder and we're going to run through some of the mods that I'm going to make to it. I'm not sure whether this video is going to end up becoming maybe even two videos probably spaced out a little bit between them um, but we'll see we'll see how we get on we'll see how long the modifications take and how much film footage that I do of each part of that and how long that all takes when it's all put together so I'll bring you back at the surface grinder just shortly and we'll start running through the things that I want to do to it So guys, we're at the surface grinder and I don't know whether any of you can spot what might be the problem but I know certainly one eagle-eyed viewer some weeks ago did and that was Dave in Australia so well done Dave, you spotted exactly what I'd spotted previously and was giving me a sense of nervousness but if you look at the the nut in the middle that holds the wheel on I think you'll probably see that the amount of engagement of thread that I've got on the end of the shaft is not really what I would class as acceptable for something that's spinning around at 3000 RPM. So to put a bit more context onto that I've just got my vernier and I'm just going to measure roughly best I can to the front of the nut. We're talking 18 and a half probably 19 mil because I wasn't measuring right to the front surface of the nut there and if I measure down to the end of the shaft I'm measuring 11 and a half so that means I've got seven eight millimeters at best of engagement of thread in that nut which isn't enough and the pitch of the thread is quite coarse it's an old imperial thread not measured it but the pitch of the thread is at least a millimeter if not more probably a millimeter and a half looking at that because I'm working in metric on the vernier so that means I've probably got six at best threads of engagement. Now the reason for that I really don't know. I've looked at other pictures of these grinders and they all seem to look a little bit like that but not to the extent of this one. So I've stared hard at this and there's not really a lot of things I can do. Um, I can make an entire new shaft through the center which is obviously a huge amount of work and I don't really have the gear for that to make it accurate enough so that's not an option. I could potentially try and modify the end of the shaft and extend it with some welding and some screw cutting and trying to pick up the original threads and all that kind of thing. It's not going to go well plus I'm going to be putting heat into a into a you know, very finely ground shaft. Uh, all of the all of the things to that just add up badly as as to being a bad modification. So don't fancy that option. So what I have done is stared at the these clamshells back and front. They're quite thick, I think, in body. And I've looked at this nut, and I've basically there's a flange on the back of this nut where the where the flats end for the spanner. And we're talking at about four, four and a half mil a flange there. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to strip all of this down, take the guard off, take the wheel off, and I'm going to measure the overall thickness of this front clamshell because I think it's about 12, 15 mil thick, probably even not, if not a bit more. I think there's more than enough scope on this front flange for me to bore a counter bore the size of this diameter to sink this nut further into the clamshell which means I then get another four and a half mil potentially five mil of thread in the front here which then means I'm only I've then got a good half an inch of thread 12, 12 and a half 13 millimeters of thread engagement in that nut which I would feel far more comfortable with than what I've currently got in there at the minute so first job is to strip it all down and see just what's going on on the back of this clamshell, how much wall thickness I'll have left if I push that counter bore into the front of it. So that's what we'll get on and do now. And just before we do that, 
<laughs> bins I called the video surface grinder mods that's only one mod there are two more that I'm thinking of so I thought I'd just come back and set the scene before we start I want to make a a back rail for the back of the magnet that I can then grind the front surface of so that I can push things up to it and know that they're square so that's the second mod I want to do and the third mod I want to do is grind once I've hopefully got this wheel thing under control and I'm a little bit more confident about grinding with it I then want to grind the surface of this table and make sure that that's nice and flat so they're the three mods that I'm planning to do in either this video or this series of videos so I'll bring you back just shortly and we'll crack on with the first the first one which is looking at this wheel and the thread engagement All right, guys we're back at the grinder what I've done I, I stripped stripped the whole thing back down pretty much again and I looked at the way the shaft was positioned because I knew the shaft could move further forward so I've rather than recessing and machining these clamshells I thought I'm just going to strip it back and see if there's anything I can do with repositioning the shaft and fixing it in a slightly different position with the nut that's at the back and that's exactly what I've managed to do so you can see there now that's a much healthier looking level of engagement so if I measure now to the front of the nut I'm now measuring seven millimeters shy of the front of the nut to the shaft and I think the nut is three quarters so it's 19 mil um, total why is that not I need to be this way around yeah I think that's about a three quarter nut I'm just trying to line it up with the front looks to be about there yeah I'm measuring 18.9 it'll be an imperial so it'll be it'll be 19.05 it'll be three quarters so I've got now 12 over 12 millimeters of thread much more comfortable with that much happier we've had it running it all seems to run okay it doesn't seem to be any tighter than it was so everything's nice and free and so I'm gonna leave that well alone now I think I'm comfortable with that we'll see how it runs and what I've done is I've dressed the wheel so we've got the wheel dressed because obviously I've had the wheel off and on several times and the shaft moved and all that so we've done all of that so that's it for this bit I'm not going to do any more with that so next bit now is to carry on making the back rail for the magnet and also to get ready to start to grind the face of the magnet so I'll bring you back when we're doing some of that alright guys we've got our back rail in we're just putting three slots there's three slots on the magnet at four inch centers so I've done the center one you can see how I set this up so I've, I've set it up so that the first slot was within the confines of the vise the second slot's going to be just out of the confines of the vise so that's two slots well supported and the third slot I've got a screw jack here and a toe clamp on top of it to steady up that third slot now this one might make a bit more noise because it might be ringing a bit more out there so we might have to go a bit steadier on that third slot but it will be fine it's only mild steel so I'll bring you back in a minute when we're putting this second slot in just to show you how that looks
There we go, 8mm slot, 8mm wide slot, through 3mm thicker material with a slot drill, no problem at all. So I'll get the last one done and then we'll get them deburred and then we're ready to then mount this to the back of the magnet. Alright guys, I thought just before we got going, I wanted to, before I start grinding this magnet up properly, I thought we'd, well the first thing I did was, I thought I'm just going to check the the bolts, make sure everything's tight. Not, probably not going to strip it down at this stage. And when I tried tightening this side bolt up on the left hand side here, it just seemed to keep tightening and I thought that doesn't feel quite right. So a bit more investigation. And this looks like some kind of homemade teen-up type affair. And you can see what's happened. It's been press fit into a hex nut of some sort. So the, the threads have been turned out of it and it's just been press fitted in and it's pulling out. So that's that's actually loose on the end. So I'm glad I just went to the trouble of checking that. I mean the, the magnet wasn't going to go anywhere. It was it was tight enough with just one one bolt holding it and this was holding it anyway. So that's the next job. I need to fix that. The other end is similar but that looks like that's been puddle welded in the bottom to weld the, the nut onto the end of the shaft or the end of the stud but these yeah they look quite sort of job in shop made or whatever you want to call it they're not the best so I'll have a think about that and see whether we probably make a, a nice couple of T-nuts and I'm probably these are going to be half inch width with probably I'm probably going to go from half inch width width to M12 make the T-nuts up to the right size and shape and then we'll probably go for an M12 thread I've got some M12 studding and then we'll put some nylon nuts on the top the same as what's already on but in metric so that'll be the next job I'll probably not film that I've filmed making T-nuts in the past so it's going to be the same process I'll have a think about what we do I could yeah I could fire the welder up and puddle weld that probably clean it up and that would be perfectly acceptable I might even do that I'll bring you back in a bit when I've made my mind up alright guys I couldn't help myself I wasn't going to try and repair what I'd got so I've made two T-nuts they've been machined as one one long bar split in half machined to length and I'm now going to drill so spot drill, drill 9.7 millimeters and then we've got a 10 mil reamer why am I reaming a T-nut you might ask what I'm then going to do is get some all thread or some studding and I'm going to turn that down to a good vice push fit on this 10 millimeters really largely just so that it's nice and square when it goes in and I'm going to leave it 2 mil shy of the bottom when I press it in allowing me then to weld in place from the back and make a real good job of it. You know, these are single use, they're only going to be used for holding this magnet down so I'm going to make them dedicated, make them properly. I've got a nice long T-nut that's going to distribute its force evenly over a long distance in the T-slot so I'm just going to crack on with that now. Shall we try again?
there we go we've just used the old split nut trick don't really like using it but gets you out of a problem if you've not got a collet chuck if you're only doing really light turning not the safest thing in town probably wouldn't advise using it but a useful tip if you're really stuck and you don't want to damage your threads so I'll get the other one done like that and then we're ready to weld those into the T-nuts well, there we go guys so 10mm 10mm reamed hole in the centre of the T-nut and I've turned this clearance 10.01 so just a tiny tiny bit I don't want them a hard press fit the welds gonna hold them in place this is just about a quick and easy way to square the thread up with the T-nut and know it's square when I'm welding it and it can't move anywhere so we're just gonna pop that in the vise now press in fairly easily and I don't want it all the way in because I want to leave myself some room for, for weld at the back there we go that's it pressed in and I've got myself a little cavity at the back there now to fill with weld and make that a permanent a permanent fixture for the surface grinder and I think that's far better than that which was a similar sort of thing looks like it's been hand ground down here to size at the bottom it's been mashed up on the end and then pressed into a nut hoping that that was going to hold it and it clearly wasn't so we'll finish these ones off now and then I'll bring you back at the grinder when we're putting everything back together. Right guys, we're just about to put the magnet back on here and I thought just before we do, we'll just run some checks on this base surface and just see what that's like before we load the magnet back. So basically, I've got a clock set up and all we're going to do is wind, wind backwards and forwards like this and see what's, uh, what's on the table. So I'll just zoom you in at the clock in a minute and we'll see what we've got. So best I can measure it back there we've got about 0 0.01 of a millimetre. Right guys, we've got our magnet on the surface surface table, everything's cleaned up. I ran a stone lightly over the top surface of the magnet just to make sure there was no high spots or anything like that. It's sitting down very flat, there's no there's no wobble in it at all, so I know it's the top surface is flat at least. And I've got my clock set up. I'm quite limited on this surface table really. I'm gonna to have to do this in two halves, but where I'm measuring this and how I'm measuring this by dragging the clock round on the base surface I'm getting about four or five tenths of a thou difference where we seem to be four or five tenths linear higher in the centre section than we are at this section here so I've got a linear five tenths going to there what I'm going to do now is switch the magnet round and we'll check the other half and see if that linear plus carries on in that direction. So I'll just do that now and I'll try and zoom you in on the clock as we do that. So I've switched the magnet round the opposite side and I've rechecked it again. I think I had a bit of a tiny tiny bit of something underneath it before. And I was there is a slight linear taper but it's it's a lot less than what I'd measured. It's about a tenth or two tenths of a thou. To the centre and by the time I've got over this side we're measuring about four tenths of a thou and it is completely linear across it so it's flat and basically same job I'm just drawing across best I can across 
sweeping across the area with the clock and it's it's going to be really difficult for me to get you in on the clock because I'm actually moving the clock but we'll just try so that was set and I've moved this about two or three times now and that was set at zero on the other side and it's it's very repeatable every time I take the clock off move the magnet put the clock back on it's very repeatable and so that the error that you can see there which is plus it's about one division plus and this is five tenths of a thou division this clock so I've got about five tenths of a thou end to end but along the sweep there's very little movement you know end to end it's very flat so what I was looking for there was is it high in the middle is it high one end or the other are there any lumps and bumps but this will sit down flat so I'm comfortable that this can go on as it is at this point I'm, I'm not going to intend grinding this underside surface so we'll set this back up on the grinder now and then we're ready to start flash grinding the top of the magnet Right, we've positioned our magnet back on and we've measured equidistant with a rule about the table so I know I'm about in the middle both ways. What I've got here are my new clamp nuts, T-nuts and threads that I've made that have had a chemical black on them to give them some corrosion protection. I've also use the same clamps that were on before but I've had them in the mill, skimmed them all up because these were rusty old things so cleaned them up, made them a, a matching pair because they weren't matching originally, they were different sizes and that was, it didn't matter but that was just my OCD so we've made them the same given them a chemical black as well so we're just gonna loosely knit these up now and then we'll get a DTI on and we'll square up the front face of the magnet to the table travel to make sure that that's, that's squared up Alright guys we've got we're ready to go flash grinding the top of the magnet so everything's bolted down all ready to go we've had the grinder running for a bit just to warm everything up make sure the spindles at operating temperature which makes a difference and also we've got our magnet on there's two schools of thought on this well there can only really be two schools of thought on or off I'm of the opinion and I was taught that when you flash grinding the magnet you always do it with the magnet on because that's how it will always be working in operation so we're going to do it with the magnet on and we're just going to I'm somewhere near my start point so we're just going to come down search for the high point so we know where we're starting from and then we'll get into the grinding
Well, there we go guys, that's about as good as I'm going to get and I don't mind saying that's been a bit of a nightmare if I'm honest and, and I don't know why. Well, I, I've got some ideas why but it's, I think this wheel might be getting a bit too small, that could be one thing. But what I'm also finding is obviously in between the magnets here I'm not quite sure what material this is. I think it's a very soft material. I don't think it's lead, but it's something of that ilk. And I think that's clogging the wheel. So, and this is a big, this is a big area to grind for a wheel that's only half an inch wide as well. And so, I've been struggling with clogged wheels. I've had to keep dressing the magnet. And this is a bit about me learning this grinder as well. And also, what I'm finding is this wheel is getting warm, as all grinding wheels do, because there's no coolant on this machine. And as the wheel warms up, it's obviously expanding. Well, either the wheel's expanding or the magnet's expanding under the heat. And controlling the cut or the depth of cut is very difficult. So, what I've had to do to get this final magnet done, or this final surface done, sorry, is to be taking cuts and then giving a bit of a dwell at each end just to let things cool back down again and I've managed to get all the way across so the surface finish isn't super brilliant I've got evidence of two sets of vibration in the markings here so I've got vibration from the wheel which I kind of expect because it's unbalanced and you can't balance it and I've also got some very faint markings and you can only just see them in certain lights that is being transferred through from the rack and pinion on the on the axis. Not a lot I can do about that. Um, really, the rack and pinion is the rack and pinion. It's always going to give that kind of shadowing effect. It's more visual than it is tactile. I certainly can't feel any of the markings. You know, it looks it looks a lot worse than it actually is. So I'm going to call that done for now, I can always grind it again and I'm going to focus on getting the, the back rail on and we'll see, what, see how that goes, we'll do some test grinds, see what sort of control I've got over grinding things over a much smaller distance which will keep the wheel in control and temperature and all the rest of it and if I'm not happy with it then we'll, we'll decide what we do next. There we go guys, that's probably it for this episode. I've got a bit more work to do on the back rail and I'll maybe show some of that in a future video or in a blether video or something. I'll record it when I do it. So I need to, just in terms of time, keeping this episode timely so it doesn't go on too long. But you've seen, basically you've seen the, the strip down, sorting out one or two issues there on the grinder and the sort of put back together and the geometrics that we've done and the grinding, if you want to call it that, of the surface of the magnet, which was challenging. I think I've got a bit of, quite a lot of learning to do on this grinder actually. It seems to be incredibly temperamental now. I don't know whether that's my wheel. I don't know whether it's the grinder itself. So there's a bit of learning to do on that. And I'm trying to understand why. Very strange. And if anybody's got any ideas who've got a similar grinder or been using one of these, please let me know. It just seems quite bizarre how you can take a cut, you can take a spark pass and then you can go back over the same surface again without changing any settings and for some bizarre reason it just starts cutting more and more and more and then the wheel just suddenly starts digging in. So it's almost like, well you can't say the wheel's sagging because the head's fixed. So it's almost like the table is 
rising up into the wheel. I can only think it's thermal, thermal growth of the wheel, thermal growth of the magnet or the part that you're grinding. Really don't know, so I need to do a bit more investigation. But at least we've got a flat surface ish on the magnet now, and we'll do a bit more learning and a bit more work trying to understand what the issues are. So I do have a new wheel. It's probably worthwhile putting the new wheel on and seeing if I'm getting the same issues with the new wheel as I get with that one. It could just be that that wheel's near the end of its useful life and it's picking up and playing silly, you know, silly buggers. But I really don't think it is picking up too much because when it's dug in like that and I look at the surface of the wheel, it doesn't look like it's glazed over too much. So yeah, a bit of learning to do, but all a learning curve, all interesting. If anybody's got any ideas, please let me know. Very grateful for that and we'll catch you all very soon in another video when we'll be making something else.